God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God on this new first Sunday of the new year, 2022. Hallelujah. We bless God this morning. Hallelujah. I know this morning God had a word for me to share, and I just wanted to get to that word today and share this word. Um, sometimes we have a lot of noise going on in this Sunday and God spoke to me and they shared this word with the people. This is a message to set the tone for the entire year. Hallelujah. If you want 22 to be better than 21, hallelujah, there must be some things uh, that we must do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to be God. God going to do all that God said God will do. Hallelujah. But hallelujah. But how many know that faith without work is dead? Hallelujah. That means that once we get up off of our knees of praying, supplication, fasting, it requires us to do something, to take action. Hallelujah. God didn't make you over, bring you over from 21 to 22. Hallelujah. Just to continue to be the lie in mediocrity. But God said this 2022. Hallelujah. This is a year, a year of change. This is a year in which pattern is going to be shifted. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm talking about a, a, a calamic shift, a, a shift that's going to do something different in your life that, that you've never seen God do before. Hallelujah. Before I go any further, I just want to go and give you a word of scripture and, and pray. And then we want to get into this word of God tonight, uh, this morning, and uh, just share this word uh, with you in this in this new year. Hallelujah. If you go with me now uh, to Isaiah 42 and the 10th verse. Isaiah 42, the 10th verse. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard. And it says, Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it the coastland and their inhabitants. And the 11th verse said, let the desert and its town lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar inhabits, let the inhabitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. And the 12th verse says it, let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastland. Hallelujah, the word of God is blessed. Oh God, I come before you now as humbly as we know how. Oh God, seeking your faith on behalf. Oh God, to share a word to these your people. Oh God, uh, a word, a beginning, a new beginning, a word that uh, predates us, a pre go before us, oh God, that pre uh, go before our moves and our steps, oh God, in this first month in this first uh, Sunday of gathering, God, we thank you now, Lord God, and we believe in this new year, in this new landmark, in this new step, oh God, is different from the past, oh God, because God, you've ordered our step in the way of righteousness, oh God, help us now in this new season to hear and do your words, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, have your way right now before Oh, all your people right now. Oh, God, allow this word to fall on here, on ears, oh, God. Not only that, but allow this word to perform uh, 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 something in someone's heart to change as a change agent, Lord God, to take action uh, after hearing this word. Oh, God, we bless them now, Lord, all the hearers and doers of your most holy word. Oh, God, bless the hearers that, uh, that are far, that's not here today, that's able to hear your word. Oh, God, bless the the one that will hear it on social media, maybe months and weeks and oh, oh, even years away from now, oh God, that they, they life still will be impacted from this word. Oh God, we bless right now. We're blessed right now. Oh God, in your presence. Oh God, we're blessed. Oh God, we're blessed, God, just because we can hear and do and have an opportunity, Lord, another chance uh, and to get it right in a new year. Oh God, help us now. Oh God, we bless you now in advance. We bless you for this church, oh God. We bless you for the members of this church, oh God. We bless you for even the building, oh God, that we will be uh, moving into. God, we bless you now, Lord, for the leadership, oh God. We bless you now for the woman of the house, oh God, Lady Walker, oh God. We bless her. We bless the music, oh God. Hallelujah. 
And more importantly, God, we bless your word. And God, we thank you now in advance for the miracle, sign, and wonder. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, amen. I bless the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, my God, I thank God this morning for what God has done. It's marvelous, hallelujah. Uh, my God, it's amazing to be in our new year, 2022, hallelujah. Had it not been for God on my side, where would I be? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to go into this word this morning. And since we are already in Isaiah, we want to go on over to Isaiah 43. Hallelujah, Isaiah 43. And we're going to, we're going to get down into this thing. Uh, I won't be before you long, but I know the spirit of God uh, can have its way uh, because this is God's show. It's not Kelvin's show. It's not uh, Lady Walker show is not the musician show is not nobody show but God show and that's why sometimes we got to cut out some things so we can hear God word and this came to me hallelujah um, and Isaiah 43 the 14th chapter I mean the 14th verse Isaiah 43 chapter 43 14th chapter beginning um, verse uh, 14 and going into wherever God tell me to stop, but I'm really trying to stop at the 22nd verse, but we'll see what God say. And it says, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and break down all the bars and the shouting of the Chaldean will be turned to lamentation. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariots and horse and army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. And in verse 18 says, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing, and now it, it springs forth, no, and do you not perceive it? And it goes on to say, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, and the wild animal will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. And the 22nd verse said, let you, yet you did not call upon me, O Jacob. Yet you did not call upon me, O Jacob, but you have been weary of me, O Israel. I just want to stop right there. And I ask that God to add a blessing to the hearing and doing of his most holy word. And God have your way now. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to come to you today and share a word with you. Uh, before I get into that word, I just want to lead us to that word in, in this new year. Doing new things in a new year requires embracing of a newness. Embracing of newness. Hallelujah. Everybody had a resolution. Everybody want to do something new. Hallelujah. I was reminded what Jesus said uh, as recorded to the gospel according to Mark in the second chapter, 22nd verse. And Jesus highlighted the perspective of putting new things into old things into old uh, capacities. Uh, and he was talking about the wine and the new wine into the old wine skin. And because of the permanent uh, permeation of the wine, the freshness, the newness, hallelujah, it will expand. And, and the old skin just do not conserve the, uh, the whole capacity anymore to hold a new batch of wine. So you will have to put new wine in a new skin. Hallelujah. With that being said, I want to give you a thought, a food for thought for this new year. And I just want to tell you that embracing a new year, uh, you must embrace new patterns. In order to embrace a new year, you must embrace new patterns. In order to embrace new year, you must embrace new patterns. 
Hallelujah. We know that God is the God that never changes, and God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But we know that times change, people change, hallelujah, uh, but our God can circumstance whatever time we are in, whatever situation we are in, whatever uh, uh, circumstances you may be facing. And I was taken aback and I was thinking about some things and I came upon, I thought about this one show I used to like and it's been a while now, but it was a popular television show. And it, it aired years ago. It was called The Different Strokes. Some of you might know of this story, uh, this, uh, this sitcom. And it was a, a rather funny show. It was about two little boys and named Arnold and Willis. These boys' mother had been the maid for a man named Mr. Drummonds. Uh, yeah, but their mother died suddenly. And... Not wanting those boys to be left mentoring and wandering in the projects, uh, in the ghetto of the town and the area in which they mother and lived with them, uh, Drummond adopted the boys and brought them to his penthouse. Yes, he brought these two boys that came from the project to his penthouse. The whole show revolved around these two boys from the project trying to address, adjust to the penthouse lifestyle. Yes, much comedy surrounding them, bringing old ways into the new environment. And there was great entertainment. And seeing Mr. Drummond try to educate these young men and the final thing, if you will, of their new environment. The question of the show was whether or not you could take boys out of the project and put them in the penthouse. Yes, and expect them to leave the project behind. Yet the whole show was about how difficult it is for people to get rid of old patterns once they have been established. And beloved, when God found you and I, we were in the spiritual project. Because of Jesus, we now access have access to sit in heavenly places. Yet we are in the penthouse. Tell somebody we're in the penthouse. We've moved on up. But many of us have drug along with us a lot of the old pattern from the old neighborhood. These patterns are called the flesh in the Bible. Some people may call it in the world and say, oh, you can't take the, the, you take the ghetto, uh, take a person out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of a person. You heard the saying in the world, and I just come here today to let you know the patterns got to change. Uh, you can't, you can't, you're not hearing me. You, the patterns have got to change. Uh, you can't be in a new year still doing the same thing that you did in 2021. Uh, yeah, somebody ain't here in 22 because they continue to do the same thing throughout the whole entirety of 21. And they had warning after warning. Hallelujah. Don't do this. Don't do that. Uh, but they're not here now. And so now and then you have decided because if they kept making the same decision and making the wrong choices, hallelujah, hallelujah, that call, I'm not going to say what it really called, but if you keep doing the same thing and keep getting the same result, hallelujah, uh, that, that's insanity, hallelujah, you can't get no better result, that's called insanity, so something has got to give, as they say, uh, something has got to change. So as I look at this show and I go on, I kept on thinking about this show and, and looking at the similarities and what God is revealing and what we can take from looking at a show and how God can show up and reveal to us some things. And because of Jesus, we have the access to sit in these heavenly places. We have a connection to be in the penthouse. Uh, no longer do we have to be in a spiritual project. Uh, yeah, uh, we don't have to hold on to the old things. Uh, we are no longer in 21, but we're in 22. We no longer have to drag the things that held us back in 21 into this new 20. Too. Uh, yeah, every year people make resolutions. I, I stopped making them things a long time ago because resolution is no good. <laughs> Hallelujah, they're no good. <laughs> what you got to do is declare and decree a thing. <laughs> I heard the word of God tell us that. And when you declare a decree a thing, <laughs> it shall come. It shall come to pass. <laughs> you got to understand how powerful your words are. Uh, yes, God has given me what to say, but I feel the Holy Ghost guiding me and pushing me and nothing me. I gotta let the Holy Ghost have his way. I can't I can't put a, a damper or a hush on the Holy
Holy Ghost, but I got to let him have his way. But before, look, beloved, I just want to continue to let you know uh, that these patterns are called the flesh in the Bible. And the flesh is not merely the Bible only, but it is the body with its old patterns. Patterns, old patterns. I remember growing up, my grandmother, she could uh, make a pattern and sew up something real quick and nice. And it looked like you bought it out of a designer store uh, because she she could take a pattern and could sew it to the exact uh, uh, thing that she had patterned it as. Uh, yeah, so whatever you pattern, whatever you pattern your life as, it shall follow. It should follow suit. Uh, it should be a, a carbon copy. Uh, uh, you pattern yourself after Jesus, then you should be a carbon copy. Uh, you discipling men and women, then they should be a carbon copy. Uh, my God, I hope somebody is getting this in this new year. Uh, what, what good is a new year, beloved? With the same old pattern. What good is it to be in a be amongst the living in a new year? A new year is a new opportunity. The newness that many did not uh, understand last year, maybe understand in 2022 by making some changes. Perhaps to change to come to the Lord. Uh, yeah, to truly give God your heart. Oh, God ain't worried about the gift. <laughs> that you're giving them, uh, you giving people. See, we get wrapped up on the gift and the commercialization of the season, as I told you. Huh? But God is more concerned about your heart. Huh? He wants your heart, beloved. And you've been dodging and ducking and diving all 2021. Huh? And you made it over into 22. Huh? Don't think you can continue uh, ducking and diving and dodging huh? because this thing uh, we are dealing with in this season, huh? oh, very well, might take you out. Huh? In, in, in his prophecy, Isaiah made an allusion to the past exodus. Yes, from uh, the exodus of Egypt, you know, in verse 16 of, this, of Isaiah 43, verse 16, uh, verse 17, he, he, made, he made the analysis. He talked about what God had did in Egypt. Hallelujah. And then he sums it up and he comes down in the 18th verse and, and he said, do not remember those things. Uh, he said, uh, yes, Israel was finding themselves in such a precarious, precarious situation as before in Egypt. So it was just right for Isaiah to remind them of some things. Uh, Isaiah said, you haven't seen anything yet. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but you haven't seen nothing yet. Don't even remember that former thing. Uh, don't even remember what he did by parting the sea and letting the people to walk on dry land. Don't even remember that, but what God is getting ready to do. And it says in the scripture, it says it said, don't remember that former thing or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. <laughs> now it's spring forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Uh, yes, he's going to make a way in the wilderness. You see, something that God said, I'm going to do something even greater that's going to blow your mind. You might have thought you got through the pandemic. You might have had COVID once. You might have had COVID twice. You might have had COVID three times. And God brought you out. You might have been on a ventilator, but God brought you out. Yes, you're in 2021. You think God blew your mind with that. They might have given you up and said, no, oh, we can't do nothing else for but all of a sudden, God said, not so. Uh, it ain't over until God says it's over. And God said, you shall live and not die. And now you are testimony in 2022 that God can do it. That God can do it. Ain't nothing too hard for my God. In 22, my God, my God, my God. Yes, as we look at this thing, we go further into it. Isaiah uh, they just he he just he just laying it out and just giving us some insight. Yes, uh, yes, God's about to do more than you can even think or ask. Uh, uh, he even can imagine the power that worketh in you. Let's remind, remember that now. It's the power that worketh in you, me, and everyone. Each individual have power. Hallelujah. We have power. Power to do a new thing. That's Isaiah speak of in verse 19. He says in verse 19, I'm about to do a new thing. Uh, yes, yeah, it's what God is saying. is often misunderstood. Often, uh, many makes the resolution that they cannot even keep because they are still going to a new year or season with the same mentality. 
that failed last year or the last season. Hallelujah, beloved. We can't keep on using the same strategic uh, uh, measures, huh? but we must be strategic and plan and do some things differently than we did in 21. Huh? The enemy, the enemy is still going to come, come on attack. You might have survived one round of COVID. You don't know what's in store for us down up the road and round the corner. But the God that I serve huh, will prepare you. The God that I serve will give you what you need. Huh? But you got to be in a place. You got to be in a place where you're willing to change. You got to be in a place where you're willing to change your perspective on certain things. Yes, you got to be willing to understand that you cannot keep having the same patterns. You got to align yourself with righteousness of God. Yes, you might align yourself last year with some vigilantes. You might align yourself last year with some people that maybe not so good. You might align yourself last year with some evil works. But this year God has made an opportunity to give you another chance to do something different. Hallelujah. We got to understand in order uh, to do good things in a new year, to do a new thing in a new year, it takes new uh, patterns. Uh, you can't use the same pattern. In other words, you can't use what God you do 21. It's going to take a little bit more. I remember reminded when the disciples were trying to cast out the demons and they couldn't cast the demon out. And Jesus came and cast the demon out like it was nothing. And Jesus told them and they said, well, Lord, why could we cast out the demon? And the Lord said the reason why certain things require not just prayer only but it requires some fasting. In other words, you're going to have to do more than you did last year. You can't do what you did last year in this new year. It's going to require that and some. You heard somebody say it's all of that and a bag of chill. Well, it's going to take your uh, zeal. It's going to take your your strength. It's going to take, yeah, the strength of your praying. Yeah, it's going to take you fasting. It's going to take you giving up some stuff. It's going to take you uh, separating yourself. It's going to take you uh, sitting in silence and sitting and hearing and not talking so much in this 22. It's going to take you meditating. It's going to take you, oh, uh, yes, just spending time in the bosom of the Lord. In 22, uh, you might not have did it in 21, uh, but in 22, you're going to have to, uh, to go further and deeper into what God is taking you. Uh, yeah, remember the scripture said, uh, oh, he knew, uh, he knew what it was, the plan that he had. He knew that you are his people. You are his one. You are the one that God have called. Yeah, you are the one. The apple of his eye. My God, the apple of his eye. I just want to help you to, right now as we look at that story and remind it of Mr. Drummond. He not wanted them boys to be left all alone and to themselves, and he did what he could. Uh, yes, to try to help those boys and get them into a place uh, to change their mindset, to give them a new perspective, to give them a new outlook. Uh, yeah, not to so to put forget about where they come from because every now and then uh, he had a moment where he had to understand that you cannot make them forget about who they were or where they come from. But every now and then, you need to look back over your life and shout hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God, and God has been good to you, better than you've been to your own self. <laughs> shout hallelujah, how I made it over. It wasn't on my good look. <laughs> it wasn't on how much money I had in my pockets. <laughs> it wasn't on who I knew. <laughs> well, I take that back. It is about who I knew. <laughs> it's about who I knew and who I yield to. <laughs> I yield to Jesus. <laughs> Yes, and when you're able to yield to Jesus huh, by way of the Holy Spirit, if you're able to yield to God in the Spirit, huh, oh my God, oh, what a blessing you will have. What an opportunity you will have in this world, hallelujah, to do mighty things. Yes, uh, in a new year, in a new season. And see, that power I told you about, you got to be able to embrace it. You got to therefore embrace the newness you have to understand that God is destined uh, to do new things in you and through you. Jeremiah, oh, Jeremiah 1 and 5, or Jeremy, as I call him, 
Yes, uh, uh, he helps to reinforce. He helped us reinforce what Isaiah is prophesying about here uh, to these people. See, Isaiah was prophesying uh, to the people because to the to the Israel, Israel because they were about to go back and they were in bondage. They were in bondage, and he was trying to speak life to them to let them know uh, who God is and what God can do and what God have already done. But don't. Hang up on the things of old. I'm getting God. Is, 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 yes, God can do new things even in this season. Oh, don't be hanging up on, on last year's blessing. Don't be hanging up on Mama and them, uh breakthrough. Don't be hanging up on the deliverance of your uncle and them. But you got to understand that God can break you through right now. <laughs> yes, you're going to have something to shout about <laughs> in this season. Uh, the season in which you're dealing with now. Hallelujah. You're going to have a reason to give God glory. God can called Jeremy into his commissioning ceremony. In, 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 in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he called him into his commissioning ceremony. And you know the scripture. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That means God already understood what it was and who it was and what the capacity in which you can operate in, the capacity in which God and the heights that God is getting ready to take you and the depth in the Lord in which he could take you. He already knew that before you knew. He knew how far and how fast you would get there. He knew some of the, the trip up in the road, the bumps, if you will, that you would trip over. God knew that from the beginning before you was even formed in the womb. He knew these things. And before you were born, I consecrated you. He said before you was in the womb and before you even uh, was manifest uh, and came to life and you would, came a living soul. Uh, I consecrated you. I consecrated you before you even could walk, before you even could eat by yourself. Uh, you was consecrated. And he said, I consecrated you and I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Uh, some of you don't even know that you have the gift of prophecy. <laughs> All you got to do is open up your mouth, <laughs> speak something, <laughs> and watch God turn it into a manifestation. <laughs> See, the problem is many of us don't know the power that lies within. <laughs> and that you cannot go in 22 <laughs> with a powerless, uh, a powerless body. <laughs> but you got to be empowered by the word of God. You got to be empowered by every word of God. You can't live on the bread alone. Jesus told Satan that. You got to be able to speak against Satan. Call him for what it is. Don't be running shy. Don't be running timid. But you got to run with your chest out. You got to walk like you're tall. And you got to know who your father is. I ain't talking about your biological father. You maybe you know, maybe you don't. But one thing certain is you can know who your God is and who is your author and finisher of your faith. You got to know that. You can't you can't estimate. You can't uh, assume. You got to know it. You got to know it. You can't uh, have a multiple choice. You got to know it for yourself. Yes, Lord, you got to know it for yourself. He said, I, I, I know this thing. I appointed you a prophet. Many don't even know the power that they have. And somebody right now, I know in the spirit, somebody need to be saying, if he did it for them, God certainly would do it for me. Who them? Them is everybody, everybody in all the collective. We keep reading about all of these prophets. We keep hearing about all the people in your family, in your in your genealogy, all the people are in your line, lineage. We keep hearing all the different generations of, of all the things in which they had prior to you. And now you uh, in a, a day and age where you'll have access and connectivity to all sorts of things. But you ain't done nothing. Ain't nothing been manifest. But God said in 22, this is the year of manifestation. 21 didn't much happen. But God said you made it over. And that testament just because you made it over. You can't just do nothing. But you got to do something. In this new year. In this new year. In this new year. 22. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, the new year. Uh, oh, yeah, new pattern, my brothers and sisters. Uh, you can't have the same pattern of last. Uh, oh, you're going to fall back and ending up in the same. Uh, and 22 going to look just like 21. Uh, yeah, you got to make a difference. You got to make a change. Don't keep going in the same pattern. Uh, oh, you got to switch up some things. Uh, go a different direction. Uh, yes, in this new year, uh, the letter writing ascribed to the Apostle Paul. That he written in Ephesians 2 and 10. 
uh, come to realization and that we are what we what he made us created in Christ Jesus for good work which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. See, God had prepared beforehand. Uh, thus, Paul was speaking and sharing from a place of reflecting after experiencing which resulted in growth. You see, you can't talk and speak to nothing if you ain't been to nothing. <laughs> Paul had been through some things and so he was speaking from a place. Uh, he was speaking from a place, not only knowledge, uh, not only, but experience as well. Uh, and after you experience something, don't mean nothing. <laughs> it ain't what you experience because some people are going to continue to experience the same thing. Uh, didn't I just tell you uh, that if you don't make no change in your patterns, uh, your way you live patterns, the way you spend your money patterns, the way you give God praise patterns. Oh my God, the third, the latter was very important. The way you give God praise patterns. If you don't change those things, you're going to find yourself back in the same precarious situation as the children of Israel found themselves. But you need not worry, my brothers and sisters. And Isaiah told them, oh, you think God did something when he parted the See, don't get hung up on those miracles, but get hung up on what God can do by hanging the sun up every morning. And you ain't got to look for it, but it's there. Yeah, you ain't got to look for the stars, but they there. You ain't got to look for the moon, but it's there. That's something that you should wonder. Oh, my God, how in the world can God do such a thing? Oh, my God, you should get excited about that. Don't get so worked up on the miracles, because it's a miracle that he woke you up this morning. It's a miracle that, it, you know, you ain't in the grave. There ain't no long clock that can wake up the dead. And if God can call the dead first and then those that are caught up uh, that with him and will be caught up in the midst of the air, we need to understand that that right there in itself is the wonder. Oh my God. Let me get back to what I come to do. Uh, yes, he came to a realization because of what he's already done, what he's already experienced. It ain't so much about the experience, as I said, but it's about what the learning comes later on. <laughs> See, the experience is it, it, it only for to be once. See, sometimes people find themselves having the same, take the same test over and over. Why? Because they didn't pass the test. And so experience does not teach you nothing. I want to help somebody right now. I know somebody said, what are you saying? Uh, experience don't necessarily make you wise. What make you wise is that after you've been through some things, you can sit back and reflect on what it is that God has done to you and taught you and what you gathered from what you went through. And that you ain't got to go through that no more. You can praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't going through that no more because I learned something in the midst of it and that now I reflect on it and now I'm growing. I ain't still on the same level. I'm not the one that's experiencing heartache. I'm not the same one that cannot forgive nobody because God has graduated me. Yes, I'm no longer one that hang up on a hang up, but I can learn to forgive. You're going to have to change your path if you want to be in a new year. New New patterns, new year, new you. I know a lot of folks say, oh yeah, I'm getting, I'm going to do me, boo. But you can't do you until you change your patterns. You're trying to lose weight. You're going to have to change your eating patterns. You're going to have to, you're trying to lose weight. I'm just trying to be frank with you and tell you the truth. Uh, you can go get on all type of diets, but if you ain't got the will and the mentality in your mind to make change and that you won't change, change ain't going to happen. Change come from a parent. It starts with patterns. What patterns are you going to exhibit? Oh, your lifestyle pattern. If you want to live a holy life, you got to want to do holy things. That means all the unholy stuff must go. That means you have to do holy things. You have to do things that are wholesome and things that are developing of your holiness that God has called you to. You got to get rid of some things. Get rid of some people too. I'm just being frank with you this morning. 
to let you know in 22, a new year. Oh, yeah, but you got to make some new patterns. Oh, yeah, let me get on to it. I'm about to take my seat. I've just come here this morning to share. Oh, yeah, you got to understand this, my beloved friend. Yes, Paul did not always have the mentality of reasoning. In fact, if you remember, he was a persecutor of the people of the way. Yes, only when he had an encounter with Jesus that changed his whole mind, that changed his way of life, and wasn't afraid after he had an encounter with the Lord. He wasn't afraid later to share with person uh, with people and with the Romans in, in particular. Uh, yes, he shared with the Romans the necessary necessities to doing uh, something uh, a new first. Uh, it begins with changing your mindset. He told them in Romans 12, 1 and 2, he said, do not be conformed to this world, but ye be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It begins with your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I talked about what is holy, what not holy, this and that and the other. Well, you got to not be so filled up with this world. Yeah, that you be no earthly good, but you can't be so earthly good, so earthly good and no heavenly bound. You got to have a balance. You got to have a renewing of your mind daily. Paul said, yeah, I would fall had it not made me renewing my mind. You got to renew your mind so that you may discern, so that you can understand what it is uh, the will that God has for your life. Uh, you see, everybody uh, can't say I was a victim uh, because once you know to do better, uh, you got to do better. Uh, I want to just elaborate a little bit. Uh, what is good and what is acceptable? Uh, we say what is good and what is acceptable. Uh, you can't know this until you able to get in the plate of discernment. Uh, that means you must free your mind uh, so you can hear from God. Uh, that means you must get to a solitude place uh, so God can speak to you. You got to get to a place where you can shut up. You got to get to a place where you can receive. You can't always give out, but you got to get to a place where God can speak into your life so God can share some things to you. If you're a leader of a ministry of any sort or any type of work, you're giving out something to the masses, but you can't be so much giving that you can't get it back from God. That means you got to sit at the master's feet. Uh, I implore you, my brothers and sisters, uh, to get on this thing with me this new year. Uh, and that is journaling. Uh, in this new year, I begin to journal. Uh, from day one of January 1, uh, I begin to journal. Uh, and now we're going to continue journaling daily. Uh, because in that, uh, beloved, you can reflect, uh, uh, yes, on what it is that you experience. Uh, and from it, you can discern what it is that God is trying to teach you. Uh, yes, in this evil and last day. Oh, you got to get the lesson. You can't got no time to have a repeat course. You might have some money, but nobody got time like that to keep spending time and spinning your wheels and taking a class over and over again. Never to attain the mastery of the class. To get what it is that they were supposed to learn in the course, but to continue to spin your wheels. God said no more spinning your wheel in this new year. But you must understand that in this year, you must see that God has a plan for you. As I speak a plan, as I get ready to take my seat, I'm getting ready to close this thing out. I just came by this morning to share a word with you, to let you know that you've got to embrace this new year. And you most more certainly got to embrace new patterns to get the fullness of this new year. Yes, but I must let you know, beloved brothers and sisters, oh, if you don't plan, you plan to fail. you got to have a plan. A plan, you see, lead to action. And if you ain't got no plan, you ain't desiring to do nothing. Let me say that again. If you ain't got no plan, you ain't trying to do nothing. You just all talk and no action. Oh my God. Let me help you now. Yes. Yes. You got to understand this now. You can't continue to do things as you always done. Just talking. Just talking, talking, talking a good game, but can't back nothing up. But see, you are a God child. 
and you can't be talking all that mess on all of that smack and ain't got no action behind it. God don't don't take too kindly of that. So I just want to implore you, my brothers and sisters. That we got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. Tell somebody, tap it down in the chat. You got to have a plan. Cause if you ain't got no plan, you about you planning to fail. You ain't gonna win from the from the get up. You are gonna lose all the way. And I like that you must have a plan. Not only have it, my brothers and sisters. See the reason why the plan always fails is because sometimes we don't even know what the plan is. And the reason we don't know what our own plan is because we ain't got it written down. I, I like how the prophet Habakkuk said, uh, yes, in second chapter of Habakkuk, the second verse to the third verse, he said, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. I don't know what you're running for, but you can't run if you ain't read what it is to run for. But for there is still a vision for the appointed time. Tell somebody the appointed time is 20 22. Yes, God has given me my marching papers, my orders. Yes, of what I am to do in this season, in this new year, with this new pattern that I've thought of. Yes, a pattern is my plan. Oh, how I'm going to do this thing. It speaks of the end, and it does not lie. Ain't it glad about it that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of a man that he must repent. If God said it, watch it come to pass. Just watch and see. Watch it come to pass. It will surely come. It will not delay. But look, look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. You can't no longer live by what you know. You can't always live on what you know. Yeah, you can't live on what you have, but you can live on faith. Faith in the Lord. What he already done. What he already fixed. What he all set up for you. What all privilege he already given you. Yes, on the Calvary cross. Jesus. Yes, ain't you glad about it? In this season, God is able to do all things, but fail. Ain't you glad about it? Y'all, you got to do. Embrace this new year, beloved. Embrace this new year. Oh, you got to embrace it with new patterns. Don't go back doing the same old stuff. Yes, in 20, uh, 21, some of you didn't wear your mask, and some of you made it through. Okay, you might have got COVID once or twice, but now in 22, they got different strands of the variant coming. Omicron, yes, it's so contagious. When you first get a first a hearing of it, it sounds like it's something that's going to be with you forever, because we know I'm not in the, in the, in the text of the Greek. We know it means with us, and I'm not mean with the, the Lord. So, so when you hear this stuff, you almost saying, oh man, this thing, oh, this thing sound very potent. And it is. It's potent. But in this new year, you might not roll your, wear your mask in 21. You better wear your mask in 22. Yeah, you might have not got vaccinated. And walking around all tough. But if you in this 22 and you made it to 22, you better get vaccinated. There's over 700 million folks that didn't make it. And they wish they could have got a vaccination. But you are on the living side and you have opportunity another day another opportunity a new year yes don't throw it away don't take it for granted but use it for the glory of the lord yes the only thing that's gonna last is what you do for christ everything else is a wash everything else is just a, a, a vapor everything else shall perish along with your body along with your sinful flesh but everything else is nothing but i just want to implore you today my brothers and sisters embrace a new year with new pattern. Don't do the same thing you did last year. You ain't got to have nobody do a, 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 a New Year resolution and all of that. All of that. Wash. I Don't do none of that. Don't do none of that. All you got to do is come to the Lord and be, and be sincere in your heart and watch 
God do something that will blow your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you right now. I get ready to open up the altar and pray for you right now. Hallelujah. Right now. Oh, my God. I hope somebody heard this word. Hallelujah. I'm not a, a long-winded preacher, but I just had to share it with you today. You're doing, God is doing new things in this new year. The reason why many of us cannot embrace the newness is because we're still living in the old. We still don't see God doing nothing new. I just told you, if God woke you up, hallelujah, and you're still alive even now, even days after the new year have came in. Hallelujah. Seven days after the new year have came in. Hallelujah. That, that, that's a blessing in itself. Somebody didn't make it even to the last minute of the 11th hour of this new year. Up to this new year. They did not make it. They did not make it, beloved. And I told you that a week or so ago. I say, hey, some of us might be here. Some of us might not. I said, nothing is, is promised to us because we never know the day or the hour. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Don't be, God's not wrapped up on time, but we should be very much concerned about time and keeping track of what we, what we, you know, what have we accomplished in the time that we have because, oh, God's going to require of all of us and we have to be ready. So in this new year, I just want you to embrace the new year with some new pattern. So, beloved, you will be ready. The first and most important pattern is that you got to have a plan. The plan of salvation. <laughs> That's the most, the most foolproof and more sure proof that you could have. The first plan you need to have is the plan of salvation. Have your plan in order. Ensure that your salvation is intact. Hallelujah. I'm going to offer that to you right now. You might not know Jesus. Hallelujah. You might not know Jesus. But I declare and decree this 2022, you know Jesus. You will know Jesus. Not only that, but you will grow. Hallelujah. In the Lord. In this new year. What good is just knowing Jesus and don't have a relationship? Hallelujah. See, in relationship, help us foster a, 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 a good good community, good working relationship. It help us to become better. Hallelujah. Help us to grow. Hallelujah. But when you grow in the Lord with a relationship, oh my God, you that's worth more than a million dollars. I want to pray for you now. I want to offer Jesus to you now. I want to offer you the chance to come to Jesus right now. If you believe in your heart and confess it in your, with your mouth, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. That's the beginning, beloved. But then at the beginning, the good work that God is going to do in you because of your willingness. It comes from a place of willingness. And because you have decided today to change your pattern. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you right now. Oh, God bless this soul that coming to you right now. This young man, this young woman, this, this, this elder man, this elder woman. Hallelujah. That dedicating their life and giving their life to you today, Christ Jesus. Oh, God. They're doing this now based off of what Jesus have already done. And God, they believe in their heart and they confess with their mouth that you are Lord Jesus. And that now, right now, Lord, you paid the sacrifice, the penalty that they would have to pay themselves. But, Lord, you start not worried to burden us with that and not even burden them with that and that they will be free from all their sin by you paying us ultimate sacrifice. But, Lord, they know that they that stop right there and they're willing now and their testimony right now and their testament of them giving their life to you and that they are just beginning to give every aspect of their life over to God in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, God, that soul will be sealed. Oh, God, hold God right on the book, of, in the book of life, God, and that they begin to work out their own soul salvation with fear and trembling, oh, God, in reference to you. Oh, God, I bless you now for these, your saints and the believers everywhere, God, those that held out from 21 and over into this new year, 22. Oh, God, that is seeking to do a uh, change in their lives and make pattern adjustments. Oh, God, to do greater work for thee in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, have your way now. Have your way in this ministry. 
God have your way in our time when we we're writing and jotting in our journals in this new year as we journal. Oh God, our every move daily, Lord God. So we can look back at it and reflect and Lord and gather and, and even grow and go further in you. In Jesus' name. Have your way in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I thank God right now. Thank God for what God is doing. Hallelujah, beloved. I just wanted to offer you the opportunity today to sow a, a first fruit seed for this new year. Hallelujah. I know some made it done it on the first night uh, uh, coming into this new year. But we often do it on our first year, the first day of our service that we come back together. In the new year, hallelujah, it's a blessing to be before you. It's a blessing to come together. Oh, how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, I thank God right now for you. And I just want to give you the opportunity to sow into this ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give through way of cash out, give a five. Tithely. Hallelujah. The Lord bless a cheerful giver. God bless the hand of the giver. God bless the heart of the giver. The desire, it all begins with a desire. Hallelujah. When you desire to give, God make ways. Hallelujah. Did you not get that in the word today? Hallelujah. I just want to let you know that God make ways in the wilderness. He'll make rivers. Think about that now. You're making a river in the wilderness. Hallelujah. You ain't going to find in the desert. A, a river in the desert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. In the desert. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's greater than just, you know, he, he would do it. He would do it. It's greater than some of us can even imagine. Think about that now. So I just want to bless you now in the name of Jesus. God bless us. Give us, bless the, the heart, desire to give. Lord, those that maybe not have God. God, this is the year of abundance. I declare and decree it now that overflow will come to those that have less. And that those have, Lord God, that you will add increase. In the name of Jesus. We speak that now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless this ministry and for the, those and giving, Lord God, for the work of the ministry in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I just want to offer you that today, beloved. I thank you for joining us. Those who are on uh, social media, we thank you. In this new 22, we're going to be putting some things. We have a uh, YouTube channel, and we also want to encourage you to start to um, and here very soon to be able to transition and catch us on a YouTube live. We're going to try to work that out in this new year and try to put a lot of our stuff live. If, if we can't put it live. Maybe it'll be pre-recorded. It'll be recorded uh, from the regular service and shared to the YouTube for your uh, way to go back. I know sometime on Facebook, you try to find something that you wanted to hear, a message, and you can't really find it the way you want to find it, but you can go to the YouTube channel. It is all there. Hallelujah. You can see what you want to see and uh, do what you want to do with it or whatever. I just want to give you the opportunity to do so. Hallelujah. So as we uh, take down from this plate, God, but never from your presence, Lord, we ask that you be with us, oh God, to guide us, to keep us, oh God, to even give us the joy, unspeakable joy, and Lord, to give us the peace, oh God, that surpasses all understanding that cometh from you, oh Lord. And we thank you now, Lord. We thank you in advance, Lord, for the divine protection, the hedge of protection over us, oh God, uh, from danger, seen and unseen. Oh God, we, we thank you now in advance, oh God, to keeping us and have kept us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we bless you until we come again in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.